Today on Straight Talk Africa, a look at the new political developments in the South Sudan. Who is the legitimate leader of the Sudan People's Liberation Movement in opposition? Is it General Taban Dengai, the current first vice president appointed by President Salva Kiir after Dr. Riyak Machar, the man he replaced, fled the country? Or is it Machar who signed the eager sponsored agreement? That's coming up next right here on Straight Talk Africa. Hello, welcome to Straight Talk Africa, live from the Voice of America studios here in Washington. It's Wednesday, October 5th. I am Shaka Sali. And hello to you, Shaka, and hello to all our viewers and listeners on the continent and elsewhere. I'm Mariama Diallo, your social media reporter. And today it's about the latest political developments in South Sudan. Or coming up later in our SCA inbox, we'll share your thoughts on what's happening in South Sudan. That's through your emails, tweets, and Facebook comments. That's ahead on Straight Talk Africa. Hope you'll stay with us. The South Sudanese government has directed all its institutions to comply with the deployment of the UN Regional Protection Force. My colleague Paul Diho has more. The security situation in Juba and other parts of South Sudan is tenuous after former Vice President Riyak Macha and his allies ordered their forces to regroup for armed resistance in an apparent attempt to topple President Salva Kiir's government. The announcement follows the collapse of the transitional government of national unity once headed by President Salva Kiir and Riyak Macha. Although the two men signed a shaky peace deal a year ago, fighting has continued since Machar fled the country in July. He's now living in Khartoum in neighboring Sudan. South Sudan is facing a mountain of challenges, including a deepening humanitarian crisis that has claimed hundreds of civilian lives and fostered 2.5 million citizens from their homes. Appearing on VOA's Africa 54 news program, Stephen Pakol, a member of the Political Bureau, South Sudanese Liberation Movement in Opposition, said that declaring war was a sentiment shared by many people in South Sudan. It is not the SPLM I was declaring war now. It is the people of South Sudan actually no, no, no. You, you declaring war. No, no, no. Listen the leadership. to me. Listen yeah. to me. Yeah. The leadership is just managing and anger of the people who have been brutalized by this dictatorial regime in Juba. South Sudan's government has asked Sudan and other nations in the region not to let Machal launch a new rebellion after he threatened a return to the battlefield unless his demands to revive a peace deal were met. President Kiu fired Riyak Machal in July from his uh, post as first vice president in violation of the peace agreement that gave both men equal powers. He then named opposition negotiator Taban Dengai as first vice president. The United States is strongly condemning recent remarks by Macha for a return to conflict against the government of President Salva Kiir. Uh, we find it inexcusable that he would continue to promote armed resistance. It indicates a lack of concern for the well-being of the South Sudanese people, uh, millions of whom continue to struggle just to survive, and just as much want to see peace. So as we've always said, the United States expects that the transitional government and all parties, including all leaders of the opposition in South Sudan, will avoid violence at all costs and implement the peace agreement. In September, the Century, an initiative of the ENAFA project, a note on our watch and other partners, released a report accusing both Mr. Kiel and Riyak Macha of benefiting financially from the continuing war and effectively ensuring that there is no accountability for the human rights violations and financial crimes. The simple fact is they're stealing the money to fund their militias to attack and kill one another. The evidence is thorough, it is detailed, and it is irrefutable. It involves arms dealers, international lawyers, international banks, international real estate. And it is because of these international actors that we are also able to provide solutions to help end this criminal behavior to protect innocent civilians. The report says that the pair unlawfully acquired wealth 
as well as extensive commercial holdings in both public and oil services operating in South Sudan. Their immediate families lived luxuriously outside of South Sudan and uh, hold significant stakes in companies that operate in South Sudan's most profitable commercial sectors. Paul Ndiho, VOA News, Washington.